Hey everybody, Christy Titus here. I'm with Preston Lentfer from Team Hornady, and we're working on a basic introductory series to reloading. And at, during this segment, I really wanna talk about bench construction considerations and layout because there are so many resources online of how you should consider laying out your bench, how you should build your bench, and then things that you might want accessible to make your reloading life easier. And, and you're a true expert at this, so what a better person to to ask these questions to than, than you yourself. Sure. Well, I, I have a lot of room here. We're very blessed to have a large workbench. So as you can see here, we've got an L-shaped workbench. At home, not quite so much. I yeah. have a smaller house. My workbench at home is probably about six foot wide is all I get. Mm -hmm. So I have to do a lot uh, of stuff in the garage and then bring it on in mm -hmm. when it's ready to load. Construction is of great importance. I'm glad you bring that up, Christy. We actually have these on solid four by fours and the, this workbench is actually lagged into the wall. When you're doing sizing, mm -hmm. that takes an incredible amount of force, believe it or not. So mm -hmm. we actually have to have a very solid workbench mm -hmm. so that we can get things uh, as sturdy as possible. Um, over here, I kind of have this laid out. This is where we bring our dirty brass, mm -hmm. we bring our cases in and we get them cleaned. As you can see, I've got a vibratory media tumbler, a sifter, uh, a rotary tumbler for when we have a little bit more time as well. Um, and then over here, once we have our, our cases cleaned, we can bring them over here and trim and we're ready to, ready to load. We've got all this uh, space over here. So a little bit of workflow from right to left on this particular bench, mm -hmm. but a lot of it depends on what what kind of, of room you have to work with. So you can kind of modify depending on how much space you have at home. A couple of considerations that um, I've heard people make, especially being a smaller person, is how far you can reach. Sure. You know, getting these big, deep benches uh, will hold a lot of stuff, but it will also tend to collect a lot of stuff. And if you're small like me and you're trying to reach for tools, you know, having a bench like this one where you have everything in front of you that you need, but at the depth of that bench isn't so great to where, you know, your tools that you're using all the time are causing you to reach far, or come off your chair, things like that. Um, so I like how this one, um, the overall width is not is not too great where I could easily reach all the equipment that I need. Yeah, mine certainly seems to collect a lot of stuff at home. Mine's a little bit deep, but uh, another consideration, if you can get things on the wall, get them vertical, your mm -hmm. eyes can see them, you can see where things are and you're mm -hmm. not looking all mm -hmm. over for them, that's a nice thing to have a uh, slat wall or, or peg wall if possible. Mm -hmm. And you have here some shelves in place too that will help optimize your storage capabilities as well and uh, allows you to use that space, like you said, to identify visually the mm -hmm. tools that you're gonna be needing for the entire process. Here, we're very fortunate to have such a large workspace where we have a progressive and a single stage loader that we can use depending on the job at any time. However, you guys are making it easier for those folks at home that may not have such a generous work, workflow space. That's right. If you have one smaller bench, we have these presses mounted on our quick detached mounting system. So a couple of, of cam locks and we can actually pull a press out, put a different one on, and we can go from progressive to single stage or whatever need you have at the time. Is there any right or wrong way necessarily to set up your bench and how you manage your workflow? Or is it mostly personal choice? A lot of it is personal preference. Once you've done it for a while, you'll actually figure out what you like. Mm -hmm. And at that point, you can modify things for, for your, your best interest. So looking at the actual bench construction, we've talked about, you know, we want heavy durable components because we're going to be putting a lot of leverage on the bench itself when we are in the reloading process. Now, the height of the bench, does it matter or is that again a personal choice? Because it would it would seem to me like it would be nice to be able to sit down and, and reach my reach my components and, and get to everything, but also have the option of standing. Yeah, a lot of that is personal preference again. However, you do make a good point. If we have a bench that might be a little bit too long, sitting might not be your best option. Standing might be able to get you to what what you need. If you've got a shorter bench and perhaps you just like to reload for relaxation, mm -hmm. a sitting height bench might be what works best for you. I do that as well because my bench also uh, turns out to be my desk as mm -hmm. well. So there's a lot of considerations there and it really comes down to personal preference. 
One thing with having the bench height a little bit taller, I can see that you might be able to utilize some dead space with additional storage options underneath that you could store components and have them readily available. But that does make a good point with the length of your bench, whether you want to be sitting or standing, because if it is too long, you know, you're not going to want to be getting up and sitting back right. down constantly. And it's definitely something to think about. Um, on my bench at home, it's eight feet long, which gives me a nice workflow space at the end where I can actually do a little bit of gunsmithing if I if I need to. So for this bench, I noticed that you have it kind of set up where the cleaning area is in a different location than the actual reloading area if you're using the single stage press. Is that because you don't wanna cross contaminate debris and dust and dirt, or is it because it's just more handy this way for this specific bench? Well, for this specific bench, it is a little bit handier because we do actually uh, do a lot of working around the press mm -hmm. when we're throwing powder over here separately uh, from our cases. On the AP side, or the progressive side, we're throwing our powder simultaneously. So we don't need a whole lot of room over here. We can grab cases and bullets and we actually are, are fairly compact. Over here, we're gonna be doing a bunch of measuring, a bunch of powder dumping, perhaps even some trimming, so I like to keep it separate. These are all great considerations for those of you out there that are looking for design ideas or additional concepts. There's a ton of resources online that you can look at options and find out really what's right for you based on the amount of space that you have in your home. There's really no right or wrong way or perfect answer to how you set up your bench, but hopefully that this segment has helped all of you at least get a good start and think about some different things that you might want to do some additional research to build your bench at home.